How many times have you heard a kid say, I hate maths or I don't do maths? You may have even said it yourself in high school. But one exceptional, enthusiastic teacher is reinvigorating high school maths, helping thousands of students to not only understand maths, but to actually enjoy it. Eddie Wu is the head of maths at Cherrybrook Technology High School, but also the creator of an online classroom called WooTube, which has had nearly 4 million views. You may have seen him featured on Australian Story recently. Eddie Wu joins me in the studio. Hi. Hi, Katrina. It's Thanks great to be here. so much for coming in. I bet you never thought that maths teaching would be the path to celebrity. <laughs> when you think about, you know, oh, A-list, B-list, like, <laughs> how many letters are there? In the world? How far do you want to go down? Um, it certainly wasn't something that I... I expected or anticipated. It is funny. Have things gone a bit crazy since your Australian Story episode went to air? Oh, look, it's just been amazing the response that people have been given. People have been so positive towards it. And I think that what's sort of struck people is how human the story has been and how everyone, I suppose, has a story. I yeah. think that's worth hearing and listening to and is inspiring once you learn the details of it. So I've just been, yeah, really flattered by everyone and honoured to be a part of it. Oh, that's great. So what attracted you to a career in teaching, Eddie? When I was at school, I had the wonderful privilege of, number one, being able to see great teachers who really made a difference to the students they taught. And also I had the opportunity to take part in lots of little opportunities where I got to experience what it's like to help someone else learn and to see someone who is younger than me and have the opportunity to help them grow. And so it gain sounds a new like skill. you were given leadership opportunities from an early age. Yeah, so and I can I can think of, you know, I did peer support leading, which was a great fun as a year eleven student taking these little year sevens who've just come into the school and helping them, you know, realize this is not something you need to be scared of. It's a wonderful opportunity to move into high school. Uh, things like cadets, uh, things like prefects, and also I was a leader in my high school Christian group, and that gave me a great opportunity, not just to be in the, uh, you know, running events and organizing things, but actually taking care of people and seeing them mature uh, from these little people who, you know, they're just wondering, what am I supposed to do with my life, and uh, how do I tie my shoelaces and all that, to making decisions and um, charting a path for their own life. It's pretty amazing. So is it that nurturing role that you really relish? For me, I love my subject, without a doubt. You know, I get to talk about interesting things all day, but I think the thing that switches me on the most and year to year makes me most excited is seeing children move forward and become something uh, different from what they were before and grow up and realize their place in the world. Mm, that's very inspiring. Um, I know that you shared in your story how your parents migrated to Australia so that you would have better opportunities here than they could give you in Malaysia. So how did your family react when you told them that you were going into a teaching career? I think they maybe thought it was just going to be a phase, you know, oh, this is, well, what does a 16 year old know about what they're going to do in life? And to be fair, I, I, I really wasn't sure. It was kind of like a, hmm, this seems like a good fit. You know, I thought about the things that I enjoyed doing, but I also thought about the contribution I wanted to make to society and a community and the skills that I had and how they'd be able to serve people. And so I think, you know, eventually they came to realize, oh, this is something he's serious about and something he actually has a passion for. And so I eventually they came around. So it wasn't really what they expected of their high achieving son. Um, have there been ways, Eddie, that your own school experience has um, affected the way that you teach? I think that when I look back at my own school experience, there were parts that were really difficult. Um, there were challenges that I faced, you know, uh, being quite an isolated child and not knowing, you know, my older brother and sister got along really well together and were quite close in age. And here I was off at the end, a bit of a bookish sort of child. And I just, I never had heaps of friends, especially when I was very young. So now that I'm a teacher, I realize that the importance of actually looking out for people who don't always draw attention, every child is unique and special and important. And so it's definitely a big part of my job every day. Yeah, right. So reaching out to those who may be a little bit on the sidelines. I'm speaking to Eddie Wu, he's head of maths at Cherry Book Technology High School, but also the creator of this online classroom called WooTube, which has had 4 million hits. Um, you've said before that maths didn't come naturally to you. So what changed with that? I think when I was at school, maths was something which I sort of could do, but didn't really understand. And I felt like I didn't need to understand it. I could just go through steps, get an answer at the end, and that was enough. But then when I got to university, uh, I realized that, okay, 
I want to be a teacher because I want to make a difference to kids. I don't really mind what subject I'm going to teach so long as I can interact with young people and help them. That was how I actually moved from wanting to teach English history to say, okay, I'm going to take a bit of a leap of faith here, literally, and uh, go down this avenue. And I realized, okay, if I'm going to have to teach this, it's not enough to just be able to do it. I've got to know why. I've got to go back to being a little kid who just questions everything and wants to know the reason behind everything. And when I engaged with that level and kept on asking, well, okay, but why do we do this? Or why does this make sense? Or why is this pattern the way it is? Then I realized, oh, there's something of great beauty uh, here to appreciate. And that's when things changed for me. Okay. So, so what is it that you would say you really love about maths now? I guess the thing that I love right now that, I mean, there's so many different aspects of it. It's a practical thing. It's all around us. The thing that I think is most deeply hitting me and resonating with me at the moment is that just like say something like music is something which you can just sort of let breeze past you and it's just part of your world. But if you stop and you listen, there's something deep and beautiful to appreciate there. Um, there's almost an aesthetic experience. And for me, mathematics, I mean, I think of something like, say, a, a bolt of lightning through the sky in the middle of a storm. And you hardly get to see one because it flashes by literally so quickly. But lightning bolts are all this characteristic shape. Why are they, why is a lightning bolt shape what it is? And there's a beautiful little piece of mathematics underneath it called a fractal. And that kind of shape is everywhere in nature once you start looking for it and realizing, oh, there's a reason for this. Things just aren't a coincidence. Our world has been designed and there are beautiful patterns just waiting to be discovered. I think I really love that. Love yep. that. Almost getting me interested in maths, Eddie. This is amazing. <laughs> Let's talk about your YouTube um, channel. That's attracted a lot of attention. What was the inspiration behind starting that up? About five years ago now, I had a student and he was very, very ill. He was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, which is pretty violent as a disease for anyone, let alone a 16-year-old boy. And so he would spend weeks and weeks away from school. And I think it's pretty challenging to learn any subject when you have to spend weeks and weeks away from school. But mathematics in particular... Every topic, every concept, every skill is built up on top of the others. So you take out one little brick and the whole thing just collapses like a house of cards. So I thought, all right, we need to be able to do something better for this child. He deserves better than this. Why don't I just start recording the lessons that I do, just what the rest of the class is experiencing without him and make them available so that at any time he can just sort of keep up along with us. won't be the same, but it'll be better than just saying, He's the textbook. That's a very committed thing to do for a teacher, Eddie. Do you think that you, the fact that you had your own family experience of cancer made you just more empathetic to what he was going through? I definitely remember as a high school student, my mother was diagnosed with cancer when I was in year 10. And all the way through my senior years, that had a huge impact on my entire family. So I think that was obviously a part of it. But I do like to... Uh, ponder the fact that all teachers, you know, resourcefulness, particularly uh, when you when you think about the limited number amount of time and, and resources that you have, that's just something we all do. We improvise solutions and we try and come up with just what's best for the kids. Yeah, well, that's, that's a wonderful skill for kids to learn as well. How do you feel about the fact that now, you know, students all around the world and in remote areas are also learning from your maths lessons? For me, it's just astonishing. I mean, I get uh, emails and sometimes even letters and cards from kids, uh, not even kids even, um, people who've left school and they've had positive or negative experiences of learning mathematics uh, will write in. I got this lovely uh, Christmas card actually from a 50-year-old dentist who sent me a little message saying, I watched this video about Euler's identity, which even among us mathematics nerds, that's a pretty nerdy thing to get excited about. And he was just delighted. Uh, to be able to experience that in a way that made sense to him. So for me, it's just incredible and speaks to the value of making our learning available uh, publicly and freely. I love that because, you know, I mean, not everyone can have access to Cherry Book Technology High. I mean, people I know try and buy houses in that area just to get their kids into that school because it has such a strong reputation, but not everyone can afford to live in an area like that. So the fact that you're making this available and kids anywhere can access this fantastic teaching, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, for me, it's sort of emblematic of the fact that, you know, all of us, uh, and I personally know this myself because it's my own lived experience, have received so much grace 
in our lives. And often we're never in a position to pay it back to the people who gave it to us. So what an opportunity we have, therefore, to pay it forward and take the resources and gifts that we've been given and freely give that to others. I think that's a wonderful opportunity to have. Yeah. And you mentioned grace. You've mentioned a bit about your faith. How would you say your Christian faith influences your work? For me, being a Christian means that the reason I exist in this world is to serve, to contribute something to my community to love people and be kind to them and therefore as a teacher number one just it's my job to look after children and to help them grow and to provide them with opportunities and help them realize the things that they're capable of which many children aren't Uh, but secondly it just for me informs the sense of care that I have to staff students parents all the people who I interact with being a Christian means that I want to do that in a way that's caring and shows love and grace to the people around me Mm. Beautiful. I'm sure a lot of um, teachers are going to be inspired by what you've achieved. I know there's a lot of awards and things out there with your name on it. What do you want other teachers to learn from your story? For me, I hope it helps encourage other teachers because the first thing on the forefront of my mind is that teaching is hard and teaching is usually a thankless job. It's really sad how many people who are dedicated to their students as educators go through their entire lives and maybe don't hear about the kind of impact that they've had on the people who have walked through their classrooms for many, many years. I hope teachers realize that the impact they can have on an individual the impact that my teachers have had on me is just so important, so massive, just immeasurable, really. I hope they realize that it's an encouragement for them to keep on going in day after day and doing a good work over a long time. That's true, because I think when um, people hold up a teacher like yourself, they're also, I guess, honoring all the other teachers um, as well who do their job day in, day out. So, yeah, thank you, Eddie. It's a pleasure, Katrina. Thank you. Yeah, it's Eddie Wu. He's the head of maths at Cherrybrook Technology High School and the creator of the WooTube online classroom.